All right, so I'm going to call a meeting to order at 7 o'clock. And if you haven't had a chance to read the minutes yet, please do so, and uh, we'll, go for, we'll go from there. I need a mail on the wall so I can see what's on the wall behind me. Yeah. It'll be backwards. It'll be right but down I your alley. But I can see it's on versus <laughs> sitting here talking because it's not. See, really, they should all be down there. Right? And we project up here. Would that be? Yeah. So. If you're on the side. If, if we um. turned everything around and put everything down there, then mm -hmm. you'd be facing that wall. It's all where you put your chair. Mine's a pretty good site right here. Just <laughs> Did you make absolutely sure you were on the right oh. website? Second. Second. Okay, now, uh, additions, corrections? I have one, anyway. It seems to me that when we were in the other at the very end, um, in, and we were having a discussion about how everything that we talked about from the uh, um, presentation by uh, the three members of the Marijuana Committee, we, we were discussing the idea that down the road, that being between now and the next, not the next town meeting, but the one with, that would probably be in June of 2019, one of the things that we were talking about was perhaps looking at our um, sign um, part of the ordinance. And as I remember, it seemed like there was a second thing that we were going to put on the next year's agenda for that, and I don't recollect what it was. Does anybody remember what the second one was beside looking at the signs? Was it about the smell? Well, maybe the odor, correct. The good neighbor policy. Good neighbor yeah. policy, too. Yeah. Okay, so those were smell part of the ordinance. So those were two of the three things or so that should be on the video someplace okay. um, that we can maybe make a, a, an addition to under other. Okay? We can do that. Anybody else have any um, thing to add or correct? Um, a quick one right above other. It says relocated somewhere on the property behind the 100 foot line. Oh, 
Thank you. Simple one. <laughs> Didn't like that, huh? Well, <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was a test. I was just right next to where we heard it. It was a test. Yeah. Right out there. See if you find oh, it. yeah. He didn't like the light. Oh, he didn't like the light. Keep looking for this. <laughs> and also on Kate uh, J um, Johnson, we passed that, but I believe. The prize did the motion passed. Did I not say that? Okay. <laughs> we did. Okay. I'm sure it was 4 0. It was. Thank you. Anything else? All that all in favor? One, two, three. <laughs> so we sort of abstained. Still, still three, 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 zero, one. Three, zero, three. Process. Which yeah, but they weren't here. here. Oh. So Watching three, TV zero, doesn't two. matter. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, go on, do it that way. That's right. I do. All right, perfect. Thank you. All right, before we get started, a couple of things. One, I need some people to sign along the way somewhere along when we get when you get a chance. Uh, for the, the Mylars, for the Monarch um, uh, pit that we had down on 109. Four, so, one, two, three, four. Yeah. yeah. And then the second thing is, I got a letter here in front of me from the Three Rivers Land Trust, and they're, they're asking or inviting any of us to go to their annual meeting which is on May 9th, next week, Wednesday. And it's at their, um, it looks like it's at their office, which is in Alfred. And I would uh, leave this here if anybody is interested in going to that. Uh, um, they can get the specific information from me. Okay. Okay. 5.30 to 7.30. So there's a brief business meeting starting at 5.30. Um, and then light refreshments after that, and then a conversation amongst everybody that is there, I sense, anyway, as to where they want to go in the next number of years. Do I have that close to being right? Is that what this meeting is all about? Yeah, it's already new. Okay. Yeah. Reaching out to the main ones and uh, conservation committees this year. Okay. Um, all right, as far as the agenda is concerned, we're, we're the, the Bleakney property on Hopper Road, you, you all, I think, know that we have a public hearing set up for next meeting, which would be uh, probably around the 17th or so of, uh, of May. Okay. Have you heard from anybody, neighbors or anything? And has anybody reached out to see if there's an issue so far? Okay. Right. Last public hearing, they all called the week after. Oh, good. <laughs> nice, nice timing. <laughs> Wanted to see what was going on and was dead set against it. <laughs> <laughs> Just missed it. Though. Just missed it. Right. Okay. So, so I assume letters have gone out. Notices have gone out. The newspaper has been notified. Okay. So we should, uh, uh, perhaps we'll hear from people. That's, that's a good thing. Anybody have any comments or questions about the site visit? Um, I, I kind of tried to email everybody the, uh, the notes that I wrote about the, uh, the site visit, and hopefully that got through to people and uh, maybe had a chance to take a look or not take a look or mm -hmm. question anything that's being said in there. Remember, those are just my, my thoughts as opposed to maybe somebody else's might have something different. I'm not sure. Good? Questions? Comments? Hopefully we'd be able to, after the public hearing, take this up in two weeks and uh, go from there. I do, I do want to ask um, a little bit. It says right on the agenda that it's a, a conditional use permit. Mm -hmm. I looked in the um, site plan, the land use chart. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just wondering. I, I remember that the shed itself was outside of the Aquifer Protection District, but the, say like the entrance, I mean, the driveway, when you look under site plan, half of it's about the driveway. There is a, um, some of the site is within the Aquifer Protection District, and I'm not saying that we should necessarily impose a site plan review on this applicant, but I'm just asking maybe you're a little bit more about what you think about that. And a lot of it is, it's existing as well now, currently, 
So here's the garage area, the old area that was an excavation pit. So current house. So there was no proposal to build the driveway or construct it or modify it. I think the only thing we had out there was was it a car for sale or two car for sale? I'm not sure there was anything for sale. There was his smoke, uh, his truck that he used to plow around the driveway. Yeah. Um, he had that, that uh, car that um, uh, he had taken ownership of as a result of a bill not being paid. Um, and I'm not sure there was anything else there at the time. I thought in the application he had some general talk of uh, oh, so, many, so many that were being repaired, so many inventory. Well, there was something on the, on the, when I was watching that there would be like four in for repair, two uh, for sale, but only, or four for sale, and only, mm -hmm. one, but only one in the front. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. It would seem pretty minimal, the amount of whatever you have yeah. out there compared to uh, the amount of vehicles you could store there now without any permitting. Right. It, it seemed that that's storage was going to take place inside of any oils. On the pallet with the containment, yeah, 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 built in. Mm -hmm. So it would be the the vehicles themselves, and I thought we had had a discussion about the idea that we were perhaps going to suggest that he has them moved over behind the garage as opposed to um, where he had those the, the, the plow and the uh, the other car. Um, we we thought perhaps that we could add that as a condition. Is we right from the draw the board's board. attention to the map that can be pulled up here because that this shows the art from protection district um, with the, the white, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you think about it, it's an old gravel pit, so probably the the base level of the gravel there is only you know five to ten above feet above the aquifer. You know, it is kind of a sensitive site. And the building itself, if you look at it, it look, almost looks like the building itself is encroaching on the... I'm just not sure how we're supposed to approach these sort of sites when, you know, they have multiple districts on them. What's the topo like? Yeah. This gets a little it's steeper. Pretty flat there, this is all flat. It comes, yeah. up, comes up as you get into the wooded part. Significantly goes up. So it tips, sheds water to, from, as we were looking at this now, from east to west. Yeah. yeah, toward the road, yeah. So these are 20-foot contour lines. Yeah. Generally somewhat flat in this area with a decrease down to its end. Mm. If you look in the, I mean, there's quite a few pages about what site rate plan review entails um, in the back of the ordinance. And there was definitely some interesting information about um, water and um, water quality protection, just kind of listing some things that that they would be concerned with in this sort of site plan review. I'm looking at page 111, um, 6.6.4.7.15 water quality protection. How, um, how close to the lines that you see on your on the drawings, your overlays? I guess I guess what I'm trying to figure out is if you have a line on an overlay, what does that mean as far as the aquifer underneath? It can't. I mean, do we know for a fact that it just comes to that line? I think these are all soil maps, and that was the general. But obviously, it just doesn't end right. Mm, I, I'm right. just curious. We used to handle that uh, to be determined on site. It's like a wetland delineation line. Mm -hmm. So, again, if the board considered it to be not a serious issue, but an issue that ought to be um, monitored somehow, the committee 
consider asking Mr. Bleakley if he would put in a monitoring well between the garage, if, that's, if the garage is the northernmost building, one that's bisected by the zone line? Yeah, like the, it touches the corner almost. So it, touches it. it looks like it's on that corner. Oh, the like, like that's that's yeah. the garage. It looks like it's missing right there. Oh, maybe. Yeah, you could ask ask for an impervious area for him to park the vehicles that are leaking or may leak. Or when you say like in other words, pour a concrete slab. Yeah, you can do a slab or pavement or something like that. Is he aware of the fact that this is an aquifer there? It may is not it? be. Yeah. It didn't really seem like it when I was reading his letter to you again or to the town. And you, you said you're gonna work on that, right? Well when we did the sidewalk, um, I asked about how he was gonna handle the uh, waste like the oils and, and that. And he had a plan for that uh, with his barrels. Uh, he was going to buy what were they call, what did he call the them? pallets had containers the pallets that would contain the if, if, they, right. if they leaked these pallets would, would contain all the liquid that was right. in the barrel so there wouldn't be a it wouldn't contaminate so he did, had thought of that true true absolutely the, the reason i pointed you to page 111 is just to read off i mean i could read them off it's just a, it's an interesting um just if you look under water quality protection a no person shall locate, store, discharge, or permit the discharge of any treated, untreated, or inadequately treated liquid, gaseous, or solid materials of such nature, quality, obnoxiousness, toxicity, or temperature that may run off, seep, percolate, or wash into surface or groundwater so as to contaminate, pollute, or to harm such waters or cause nuisances such as are objectionable, shore debris, floating, or submerged debris, oh, deposit, sorry, floating or submerged debris, oil or scum, color, odor, taste, or unsightliness, or be harmful to human, animal, plant, or aquatic life. And I just, I mean, if you think about all the operations that go on at a mechanic shop, it's not just changing the oil. They're going to be potentially grinding metals down, um, using any number of things to treat vehicles, changing fluids are going to have vehicles that are leaking or decaying on site like it's not just you know your oil change that we're thinking about there's a lot of other activities that I wouldn't even know myself that, that are entailed in these sort of operations to, that are covered in this I mean if you inadequately treated solid materials that's what I'm thinking if you're you know grinding off rust in order to paint the thing or these sort of activities are just sanding off your, you know, sanding something. These things are going to accumulate on the ground and then be washed, you know, the five feet down into the aquifer potentially. Um, and I mean, I think that's why why it's a site plan review. But I don't, I'm not sure what we want to do. I was under the impression all the work's going to happen inside the garage. So at that time, at the end of the day, you could sweep it up, clean it up. If it was the grindings of the metal, or um, if you know he's changing the rear end and some fluids came down, he could put the speedy dry and absorb it up because he, he'll be working on the concrete floor. So that could be a condition that all the work is done performed inside the his garage right. or, or his area. But it's, just how, uh, it's not that big of a garage, is it? Um, the size of this room? It's pretty good size. You can fit two yeah. vehicles in there comfortably. Is that the? Oh, I would think you could fit two vehicles in there. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's got a lift in there. Um, where it's a small outfit, probably the only reason you'd have two is you've got one taken apart and you're waiting for parts, so you're starting to work on the other right. one. Normally is why you'd have it, but. It, 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 I sense anyway that you're also concerned about the idea of cars being um, left there. As they're needed, as they're going to be worked on, right. and if there's an yeah. issue with the car that is causing a problem with things leaking, um, that maybe need to be addressed. Right. If they're dropping it off, let's say early in the morning, 
because they need work on something because it's leaking or they're dropping it off the night before kind of a deal. Mm -hmm. um, we certainly wouldn't want it to be over on that aquifer line if we want that to happen at all, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, my Ken said we could have them put a impervious surface to catch that sort of thing. It's like in the bed, you're not going to be driving it in anyway. Well, I mean, just from having owned a vehicle um, or multiple vehicles, you know you drive your vehicle around when it's leaking. You go to the for a parking lot and park in the space, there's fluid in there when you, you drive in, there's a puddle of fluid there. Sure, sure. Um, it's not as, you know, it may not be DEP amount, but it, it's there, you know what I mean? And um, like when they tell you when you're driving and it starts raining the first 15 minutes of the most dangerous time because of all the oils and things that are on the road. Make yeah, the those water aren't necessarily really from the cars or from the asphalt, asphalt itself. The right, asphalt well, just, I mean, you think about it, it's just these, these things are, mm -hmm. uh, are prevalent. And, um, so at what point would it trigger a site plan? Well, how would it? Well, that's what I'm, I mean, half of his site is in the Aquifer Protection District, like the entrance to his garage. Half of it? How do we determine well, what kind of Well, half of the, of the property, maybe. Half of the property. Um, and yeah. it's maybe not, but it's a good, good amount. A significant portion. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe not half of it, actually. But a good portion, right? Yeah, like you can see kind of like where you pull into the garage. Yeah. Like where he parks his vehicles now is not outside the Aquifer Protection District. Right. When I first looked at this, I looked at the history of the site. So it's not a brand new facility being cut in and all done. It's an it existing site that was the repair facility for a construction company. The mentality of environmental issues has changed dramatically in the past 10 years, never mind the past 30 or 40 years. I don't think there's anything this guy can do to this property to, to alter it any worse than what's in the ground right now. I, just the mentality of how everybody takes care of products now. You store it. There's a company that's going to come to pick up your quantities. And I, I think Gavin is really thinking the small quantities of stuff, not so much the he's right. going to well, drain the oil on the ground or anything. It'd no, no. The no. leaking car or but something But then like after that. 20 years and then someone else decides they want to, you know, he did well and someone else inherits the shop. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. want to expand it. And then I mean, it's a long-term thing. If we put sure. these, if we put something in place now, it's easier than trying to jump in at the last minute when they're already going gun ho so to speak. Yep. You know. I mean, are we unrealistic to think that a condition could be that you, um, on the back side of that garage, uh, could be a concrete um, uh, slab that's going to have a lip at least on three quarters of it, maybe like even more than four, and then yeah. to be able to walk, but also tipped away from the aquifer so I've that it couldn't run off on the drive-in park. I've never seen one in any of the facilities that whether we've permitted in town or places I bring mine to. Um, if you think you'd see that more at a, a filling station, gas station, or something like that. I mean, there is great comp create aprons that have some routing around and stuff like that, but um, the intention is small amounts is absorbed into the concrete area. Mm -hmm. But you could ask for a phased in thing that, you know, over X amount of time, is if he continues to be there, to add some sort of a concrete area for parking um, vehicles leaking or something like that. How expensive is a monitor? Do you suppose this guy has an impervious surface in his business plan? No. I never no. heard anything no. about that. No. Not, not I would any. think not. Uh, no, 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 it's not extra this. cost. Yeah, yeah what, what would the cost be? Paving used to be $1.50 a square foot or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's the prep area underneath. Sorry, the monitoring well. Yeah. The monitoring well. pretty good gravel underneath. <laughs> I just feel like it's, you think about it, it's like the other protection districts are actually a buffer from the resource. The aquifer protection district completely overlays the aquifer. There's, it's above the aquifer, five feet above it. There's no 250 foot buffer 
then right. you're next to the aquifer, you're, you're overlaying it. So the, the protection district is the aquifer itself. There is no buffer, so to speak. So mm -hmm. I just, I mean, this would certainly be in with any sort of buffer if there was one. And I'm not, I, I haven't come up with any sort of thorough conclusions. I just want to make sure we consider it as well as we can. In terms of going back to what Tom was saying, in terms of going out there and being able to get a better understanding of where the line really is, what would you be able to see to be able to... Well, if you remember, uh, Mr. Hannon, um, what was that guy's name? John Roy. R R Rand. Rand, yes, I guess. Um, was the fellow that we had to hire to, to help us delineate the pattern of flow and, you know, relative mm -hmm. amounts of groundwater, the, whether it was a significant issue or not, but I don't recall, as I say, the expense that would be involved in it. But that was 20,000 gallons of fuel in the ground within right. 500 feet of a public right. drinking water supply. Right. Okay. This was the gas station, the original gas station? Correct, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. With double wall tanks and triple wall uh, piping with telemetry, it was state of the art so, um, and the Hydrology reports were pretty impressive. And I think we had them done for Eagles Trace, and there were several subdivisions uh, John had worked with at the time too with us on that. I just raised that as maybe a solution between a full blown site plan review, which is a really pretty arduous process, mm -hmm. and and maybe uh, a means by which. You could get an initial baseline sense of what's there regarding the aquifer itself and maybe what is in there in terms of any contaminants. It must be a fairly common test of for volatiles or something like that. Anyway, I'll just bring it up. I don't know if it's pertinent in this case or not. It might be one way to check it out. But so am I hearing two things here? Am I hearing that uh, we, we obviously have a concern about the placement of potential vehicles and, and things along those lines and what we can do to perhaps diminish the chance of leakage? And am I hearing we're concerned about what might be potentially in the ground already? And then who's responsible for that? Is, is Am I hearing that? Well, it doesn't make sense that we'd establish a baseline so that, <clears throat> say there was theoretically a monitoring well put in, you, that this new applicant wouldn't be, you know, hit with the burden of the previous applicant. We would kind of establish a, you know, what is the quality of the water in this region initially, and then is he going to affect it, and which I don't know how well these things test these, you know, this level. I'm, I'm not in that department. Just looking at the letter too, it, it says like, you know, you list all the things that are going to be stored, like tires will be stored alongside the building, scrap metal will be stored in containers still enough to be brought to the recycling facility, um, two-yard dumpsters, um, maybe like a lot of those things could also be stored to the rear of the facility, you know, like the dumpsters from, you know, they know they have I mean, those things don't hold water that well. They definitely need. It, it's pretty difficult to be storing anything on the <clears throat> side of the garage closest to the road. Yeah. I mean, so, we were talking right. about the tires. He was talking about the side, um, you, you know, where Ken's marker yeah. is right now. Yeah, purple thing is. Yeah. yeah. And then storage under cover was in the back. Yeah. He's got a roof built in now. Yeah. So, so the other side was kind of the hill almost came against the side of the uh, wall. Uh, it's a yeah. it was double level, and you know, I think down. as I yeah. wrote in my notes, he had one somebody at one time was thinking about putting a second level there. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was the original owner. I'm not sure. But let, go back to the thought of potential harmful things in the soils. Currently existing. Yeah, from the previous owner. 
Is that something that we get involved with? I wouldn't think so. No? I mean... Who would be that person? If you had a spill there now, you'd call the DEP. Mm -hmm. If it's greater than X amount of gallons, they'd come out. If not, they'd tell you to take care of it. Mm -hmm. And it depends on uh, what you're looking at for fuel. Diesels and oils don't go down through the ground like gasoline does with the MBTE that was in there involved in stuff. Um, currently, there's, he already has a drinking well on site there. You, we could ask for testing on that. Mm -hmm. uh, he just bought the house, so maybe they mm -hmm. had testing done on it prior mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's yeah. drinking the water that, that he lives with. That's a good idea. And he's, are the trees around there? Does he have a lot of pine? Uh, on the, sh between the road and the house. Yeah, because that'll, unfortunately, I have a little experience with spilled, but it was heating oil. Mm -hmm. uh, ice came off the roof, hit the tank, mm -hmm. and um, I, had two choices. One was to write a check and let DPW take care of it, or hire someone to do it myself. I wrote a check. And we kept getting false positives after it was cleaned up because of the something in pine trees will get into your drinking water, your wells, depending on where they were. And we finally got that straightened out. And because I would have been putting in a new well for my neighbor. Actually, my well was fine, his wasn't. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if his well is, is good, if his drinking water is good, depending on, on where it is, I mean. I think it's up in distance? this, I think it's right in this general area. What's up? The where well. Is it? I think it was up in here. Up in there, okay. Is there a separate well that serves the uh, services? What services the garage? Oh, this is the well right there. Oh, okay. So, so that that's well would be clo certainly close. Close. That's very yeah. close. Yeah. I mean, relatively. Yes. What do you got for a distance there? It was under 100. Under 100 feet? Yeah. To this general corner here. Mm -hmm. Right. So that might give us at least somewhat of a reading. Exactly. Well, um, that might be beneficial to the owner, too, just to Sure. Well, yeah. if, it, if he hasn't thought of it, mm -hmm. um, are we? Is there a way that um, Rick can be notified that we have some concerns so he doesn't get blindsided in two weeks uh, about what our have concerns are? My thought was to have him come in with a water test. Yep. Yeah. If, if we're yep. looking for a baseline, but sure. <clears throat> you can get that done in two weeks. Exactly. Yeah. But if we were going to do it with monitoring wells and hydrogel studies and things like that, I wouldn't waste any time with that. And, and again, the mentality of how we take care of things now is so much different than it was 20 years ago. Um, the prior owner, I mean, if you have to change an engine out here and stuff, they changed an engine out there. It was no big deal. Uh, now you wouldn't see that type of stuff. It's taken care of with a concrete slab and protection underneath. And mm -hmm. I mean, I hate to, to, you know, approve something and then... Uh, all of a sudden, have an entire aquifer destroyed because of uh, you know something that slipped by us. When did he buy this property? A year, maybe yeah, two. Not long. Not young. No. Uh, perhaps he had a water quality test oh, done. Sure. Which would possible. be good to know. It would give us some idea. I hate mm -hmm. the idea of thinking. Uh, okay, we're going to let you do this, but you're going to have to spend X amount of dollars to do it. Uh, you know, it's like giving someone a student loan. We're going to let you go to college and get all, but you're going to pay us back for the next 40 years. Or not. Or not, or you, know? Um, <laughs> you know. You know. So, so you think it's reasonable to say that uh, you put a concrete slab so many feet by so many feet? What's what's realistic? 15 by 15? It's what? such a small scale operation, what he's proposing now. And in reality, I mean, you could have, if you have a car coming in that's dripping, you could have it parked there or bring it inside or something like that. Or park <clears throat> on a blue top, you know, something, you know, a pool liner or something like that in the area. 
But you could have the same situation with the guy that's parked here right now or the amount of salt that's used out on the road. I've never realized how corrosive that is until I've seen it uh, kill some pine trees instantly. Mm -hmm. You throw a little salt at the base of a tree, you'll kill it within a couple of months. I guess I'm not following then as far as the concrete. You're thinking that maybe that's too much to I would, require of him? I would think so because... What kind of volume do you think he's going to be doing? Well, that, that's where I was going. And at this it's, point, it's, it's very small scale, yeah. but uh, I understand the concern that you may have a customer drop your car off and you're not going to get to it for two weeks and it sits there and it just that day is when the gas tank rusts out. But that could happen in his, the car that's parked right there already. Yeah. And so, yeah. but it could happen to my car right on Grady's Lake. Exactly. Sure. I mean, sure. the board someone thinks risk management to make sure everything and all is protected. But but this is not your home. This is a business that's going to bring in more than the number of cars that you might have around your home. Right. So can well, do potentially you know, state inspection. So that yeah. indicates you know somewhat of a volume. People live on Hopper Road and drive over there. It's closer than Cornell Square. Um. You drive in and you're about half an hour to do an inspection. Right. Most most people wait for that. Mm -hmm. So the vehicle is not there for any amount of time. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just thinking about the areas of the site that are in the Hopper Protection District now. The biggest area is the driveway, so to speak, and the initial parking area, and, you know, the entrance to the garage, and just the frequency of traffic on that area. And I'm just trying to think of everything. I'm not, I haven't, haven't really got too far, really. Just, it is, you know. Can you get them to replant some trees in this area? <laughs> Knock it off. That was a good suggestion. Well, I mean, it would certainly improve this. It definitely. Yeah. I think he would be all for it, too. Yeah. Well, that would be fine. I mean, uh, I mean, so we'll talk water uh, tests uh, to start with. Yeah. yeah. I like that because it's the house well. It's a baseline. Sure. That's not too, yeah. much. Not um, too much. I had mentioned to him to make contact with the neighbors, so he's been in contact before they get a letter from the town. Um, he works quite a bit, had had chance to, but I know they've got the town's gotten a letter already from him. Um, a letter from a neighbor? No, from us. Oh, the notification's gone out. So mm -hmm. uh, mostly everyone in this is full-time residents in there, uh, knowledgeable individuals out there. So to me, I think the neighborhood's biggest concern is going to be noise. How much noise you can do in. A good neighbor, like we saw with Monarch, a uh, good neighbor can have a business going and nobody really even knows they're there. Yeah. Or you can have somebody doing half the scale this guy plans to be and they could be the worst neighbor there is. Mm -hmm. well, talk to Mr. Blake and see what, see what he feels, you know, how he could be some of my concerns. And he may have seen some other industry that they do something in and and is aware of a, a dis different thing. Because uh, again, it's his well that's going to be the first one for the And his kids and family are drinking it, so. Yeah. yeah. And, and I would think if he's, you know, as a good neighbor, he wants to do business, he wants to get, you know, his livelihood going. Um, I'm not going to drive my car in there if I see this kind of dirty, you know, oil puddles over here and uh, what looks like maybe antifreeze over there because it's whatever. I would think it would behoove him to keep it. Uh, you know, if he's got, a, I'm bringing my car and I'm losing fluids. I would think it would behoove him to say, okay, I want that car over here yeah. in a safe place. And whether that's a green tarp or a, a pool, liner. pool liner or whatever it is. Yeah, but, but on the other side of that is, is he, he, uh, he admits that he's working full time. So you're going to drop the car off very likely at a time when he's not going to be there. And if in fact that is true, um, you know, I'm not hearing that I, I'm not confident yet that we can keep up the cars that are leaking where we want them. 
Well, it says again, I want more confidence eight cars at a time, yeah. something like that. But, I mean, I'm, and I'm also not trying to beat a dead horse here because we don't even have him here to be part of the discussion. You know, and I think that'll come up next week. And I think that, um, you know, our, our, our concerns are out there amongst us at least. And then um, we'll see how that all rolls out next week or two weeks. I think your point was very good, though. Let's, let's get some information to him and mm. ask him to give us a, a, yeah. a, a water quality report so he knows that we sure. are, yeah. you know, looking at things seriously. All right, anything else on that one? You got you good there, Kevin, on that? I mean, I think good points. Yeah, it just to, to seems like it's a little bit more than your normal conditional use permit. And I just yeah. want to make sure we consider it yeah. thoroughly. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. The Monarch thing, I guess we don't have anything new on that as far as I'm con uh, that I know of anyway. So I guess it's just this, signing off on, the, on that. Re read it thoroughly. Yeah. Yeah, it's can a, you read the condition, the final condition? Oh, it's it's here. That. It's a, this little, little note. Um, maybe I should have waited until you read it, actually, because I think it was your... Um, was there more than one? Just, you only made that one condition. That's all we're really... I thought there was another condition. It wasn't really... Was it... Um, they were all, the, all the other conditions were already outlined in their proposal, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Okay. The additional uh, condition was the planting of the tree? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of spelled out in the um, minutes from the last time, pretty much. And they were open to that? <laughs> <laughs> the owner was. It, absolutely the owner was. <laughs> no, the, both the owners were at the, at the uh, previous meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Tom was a little <laughs> unsure of how that should go. Tom on? Yeah. Yeah. But that's okay. Mm. Yeah. So it says, I guess it's, it's not under erosion settings, it's under restoration. It says per planning board approval, replanting or restoration to include replanting or seeding native tree species on the existing original approximate 11 reclaimed acres at a 20 to 20 spacing within the next five years. That sounds pretty accurate. As I remember it, that's how it was. Sounds pretty good. Too. Yeah. There wasn't anything else we were looking at on this thing. In terms of restoration, is, it, is there anything that like addresses the whole property? No, it's the only one. Uh, I think they probably just added that whole. I think that was added on what was on the original plan. There must be something up here, though. Well, we got erosion and sediment control, mm -hmm. which is all this, I mean, it's kind of the same, same kind of thing. There's seven different things. I can read them if you want. Most of those are all on the original conditional use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think all of them, right? Yeah. There's only one. I think the only new one is what you you just looked at. What did they come in for originally? Because then you haven't brought the trees up. Was just to bring a crusher in to be able to use the crusher for 800 hours. I think. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's that's right. I knew they were doing that. Yeah, changed, that changed hours. from yeah. right to 800 yeah. hours. They have that, and, and you know, no, and then no Gavin brought the replanting up, right? Eighty trucks per day. Right. It says for operation notes number seven, crusher operation is limited to eight hundred hours per annum. Operation is between the hours of eight a.m. and four p.m. Monday through Friday. Noise from crusher to be less than sixty decibels at the property line. So that is a little bit different, than, but that, I think that's it. Anybody else? All good with that? 
Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have anything else? Tom? No. Uh, I was thinking to have the four proposed zoning ordinance changes coming up for town meeting, having just informational nights at the next town. We'll just post it. So if anybody has any questions, we can get them out of the way now versus going through it all at town meeting mm -hmm. because we won't yeah. have the projector up or anything down there. So hopefully we can weed out all questions and answers before we get there. And so we'll just post it as informational meetings at mm -hmm. the next couple of throw it on the end for old business or something. Okay. And, and discuss it as far as we're concerned, discussing it so that the video is out there and if people want to look at that, you're yep. not necessarily saying yep. that we'll go through each one. And we're going to have it come, people come in. Or, or are you? I'm not, I'm not quite sure what you're saying. Are you going to have an informational meeting so that we'll do it at the beginning of the meeting and, you know, I'd if people put it are towards here? the end as old business or something okay. like that. And right. if people come in, we can address questions. If it's specific, okay. how does this affect my lot, then I can work with them on the side, but we can at least go through it. So um, quite often we go through this and in January, February, we've got everything done. We put it in the warrant and then we don't look at it for three or four months right. in town meeting day. It's like, yeah. uh, what is this? Yeah. why did we do this? How come yeah. this? It made yeah. sense in February. I'm telling <laughs> you. Yeah. Yeah. So just to sharpen us up. And again, um, anybody with the public, because they may have heard uh, in our apartments of getting, you know, I can't have them anymore. We'd just be able to clear all that up. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. So we're all set up. Saying this. Yeah, you're to it. Anybody else? Any? You got the DPLs in the uh, in the future? Several coming up. Yeah. The campground seems to be still progressing. They're still working on that pretty aggressively. Um, and a few other ones that people are talking about too. The wedding venue thing still? Uh, well, we've got an application for them and they're working at the fire marshal's office level for their avenue of stuff. Um, we're talking with the Blueberry Farm people there. They're trying to still move forward with the conditional use they were given. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Unless anybody has anything else, is there a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Good. Great. Thanks. Again, anybody interested in the.